OK, um, welcome to the meeting of the Executive Cabinet Member Leaders Portfolio. Uh, we will start with item one, which, the, which is the monitoring of the Executive Cabinet Member decisions. Thank you, Leader. The two items that can come off are the creation of a Senior Equalities Officer post that's been completed and the Finance Report Quarter 3. OK, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, item two is the Aggregate Financial Monitor Quarter 3. Yes, I'll uh, present that uh, report. Thanks, Leader. Um, so the Aggregate Monitor um, sets out the um, Council's financial performance at quarter three. It is a summary of reports taken to, pre, uh, to ECM um, departmental um, reporting meetings uh, earlier in the, the quarter. And it, um, you know, the, the, key, the key thing here is that it sets out that the uh, at quarter three, the overspend position is £17.8 million. Pound. Um, on our revenue budget. Now, obviously, that overspend will be um, managed through the use of resources. The um, largest element of that overspend position is um, uh, children's services, where we are aware that nationally there are significant pressures on the um, the, the, the placement of children uh, in various, various social care settings. Um, at the quarter Three, the capital expenditure is about 96.3 million in line with the capital program that has previously been um, approved by council. Um, in table four in the report, you will see the drawdown of reserves for each of the various um, directorates. The, um, the one thing I'd like to draw to people's attention um, in that table is that um, at this point in time, children's services are showing that they would be drawing down more reserves than, ha than they have available. However, there will be corporate support put in place to um, cover this issue. Um, this is obviously something that's been discussed uh, multiple times. So, you know, if there are any questions regarding this report, I'm happy to answer them. I and mean, the obvious um, question really is the, um, the, the the continuous overspend due to the pressures uh, in children's services and what the um, Council uh, can do long term in trying to address that. I appreciate a lot of this is out of our hands uh, and is to do with the fact that we're not funded enough as a council to keep up with the increase in demand. But um, does any further comments from yourself, Graham, or anybody else on that? I think the only comment I'd like to make, Leader, is that there are demand groups that have been set up within the directorate to look at both um, adult social care demand and children's social care demand. Obviously, they'd be looking for efficiencies and, um, you know, drilling down into um, the causes of the cost. But this is a national issue. Um, I think it's been um, highlighted by the Competition and Markets Authority that there's a failure of the market of, uh, you know, private provision in children's social care, especially. Um, at the budget yesterday, the Chancellor announced another £165 million worth of spending for children's social care. But in reality, £165 million nationwide is probably less than 200 placements. So, you know, there's not a great deal of support so far from the government. Whether or not that changes in future, I do not know. At this point in time, councils across the country are having to make difficult decisions around other services to support their social care um, responsibilities. Thank you. And I will, I've said it before and I will say it again. The fact that we're able to use um, uh, reserves to plug this gap um, is the key difference between this council and some other councils. Uh, thankfully, at the moment, a minority who are effectively declaring themselves bankrupt for exactly the same reason and all credit to the previous treasurer of the council i don't think she's with us and the current treasurer for that prudent management of council finances over the year it's it's for this very reason that um, reserves are built up so that we don't get into serious financial difficulties so well done to uh, to all the team there unless there's any further questions um i can note that report uh, and move on to the next item which is the treasury management outturn report for quarter three 
Yes, uh, thank you, Leader. I'll also uh, present this report. So the Treasury Management Outturn Report um, sets out the performance against um, prudential indicators agreed by Council um, for Treasury Management activity, so our investments and borrowings, etc. Um, at quarter three, uh, the re performance remains within the indicators agreed by Council. Um, the only issue I would like to highlight is that um, for cash flow purposes in quarter three, there was uh, a need for the council to um, engage in some short term borrowing. So we um, we experienced um, a large outflow of cash shortly before the Christmas period. Um, that is mainly as a consequence of changes to the way that the dedicated schools grant is received by councils nationally. Um, unfortunately, the Department for Education decided that they would move from funding um, councils on a fortnightly basis to a monthly basis. And what that has meant for cash flow purposes is that we now see very large peaks when we receive the money once a month, but increasingly we're seeing uh, you know, drop offs in the amount of available cash. Um, having discussed this with my GM colleagues, um, it appears that um, you know this was a change that took everyone by surprise. It's not something that was uh, notified to Treasury departments, and I'm not even sure it was notified to you know the education departments in advance. Obviously, many of the uh, investment decisions we take are taken uh, you know up to 12 months previously. Um, if we invest money for a year, we do so on the information we have available. What we found is that change this year has impacted on um, the decisions we would have taken had we known about it. Um, so you know, there has been around £20 million worth of short term borrowing. Um, other than that, um, everything else is within the targets we expect to, to have um, met. And I have no further comment, but I'm happy to answer any questions. And from what you're saying, Graham, the, the, that particular cash flow problem you highlighted could be avoided by simply better communications between the Treasurer, Whitehall and, and local councils. Absolutely, Leader, absolutely. Um, like I said, the uh, GM colleagues were also not aware of this change, so it isn't something that's just impacted on Bolton. What I would say is that there appears to be um, a very um, significant drop off in liquidity for uh, councils, um, certainly across GM and talking to our investment brokers across uh, the UK. And by liquidity, I mean obviously available cash. So we are seeing, um, you know, councils up and down the country who are suddenly finding that their cash flow is under pressure, where previously it has not been. Yeah, yeah. Um, then we're all hopeful that. Um that relationship uh, between governments and councils uh, does improve. I mean, we had exactly the same situation prior to the um, the budget, didn't we, where sudden new announcements were being made that didn't allow us to take that through to public consultation. And we had to react literally uh, as the report was being written and ready to go through to council. And it's really not a good, a good way for government to uh, treat uh, local government finances uh, and it has consequences as, as you've just outlined okay thank you is there any further comments from members no okay thank you very much graham thank you um what's my agenda so the next item is improving the council mobile phone contract thank you leader um i'll take that if i may uh, so this is a recommendation seeking your approval leader for a new mobile and data contract. Um, we have at the moment two separate contracts, one of which has expired and is rolling on uh, a monthly basis and uh, a second one expires at the end of March. So we have those contracts with Vodafone and EE. Um, there are historical reasons why we've had two contracts relating um, mostly to the level of signal, in fact, and coverage uh, in, in the past, which is why we needed a separate contract for a small number of phones, but those matters have been addressed. Uh, so we're le looking to uh, put in place, procure through the uh, Crown Commercial Service, um, a direct award uh, to a single supplier, which gives us tremendous opportunity to um, optimise the cost associated with these arrangements. Uh, over the last year or so, we have spent uh, close to £400,000 on mobile and data services as 
clearly as mobile phones are used increasingly to support digital ways of work. Um, we have an opportunity uh, through a direct award now to move it closer to something in the region of 40,000. In fact, there is a price check mechanism that the team has used, uh, which suggests that the, the price probably would be about 38,000 um, a year. That is based on some optimising. So the technology group in the transformation division have been optimising the number of connections. Um, so the number of devices that would come under the contract. Uh, we currently have 3,170 connections and we think we could probably reduce that by 400 or so. Um, that in short would provide the council roughly uh, 200,000 or more cost saving per year through this change uh, and move, movement into a single contract. Um, so we feel that it's a very good optimising move um, while making sure that we have the right level of service for um, staff and actually the service will be better because there will be a larger data pool as well that we can draw upon. So that is the recommendation leader. OK, it um, seems like a logical and very good move, uh, especially when it really it, it releases um, what did you call it? Optimization of costs, uh, translated That's as right. saving money. Yeah. That's right. Um, any any further comments? If not, I'm uh, happy to uh, approve that report. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, item five is review of HR policies, and there are this is a single item, but there are a number of. Um, HR policies within this item that have, were circulated as as attachments. Um, who's taking this item? I'll take this item, leader. Morning. Thank you, um, we've had a few uh, legislation changes which are coming in from the 1st of April, which have affected some of our policies, so they've been updated to reflect that. We have the Carers Leave Act, the Paternity Leave Amendment Regulations, um, Protection from Redundancy Act and the Flexible Working Regulations, which are all being updated from the 1st of April. There are only minor amends to our policies, uh, things like notification timescales, um, updates of the names of the legislation, things like that, um, more practical measures really that have been updated there's nothing significant the only change um which is notable is in the leave policy if you recall last year we introduced five days paid reservist leave for staff who were reservists to enable us to apply for the armed forces covenant silver award which we achieved to enable us to go for the gold award we need to be offering 10 days paid leave for reservists so in the leave policy we have increased the leave to 10 days paid leave we don't actually employ any reservists as a council at the moment so as part of our work towards achieving the gold award that is one of the things we will be looking at um, how we can increase or have some reservists within our workforce um, and if there's any questions I don't think there's anything more certainly makes it a more a more attractive proposition for reservists to work for Bolton Council if we supply in 10 days um, um, well it's not really leave but 10 days that uh, they can carry out the work um, Roger you have a uh, long and illustrious uh, career in HR. Is there uh, any any comments or observations from yourself? You're on mute. Quite happy with the proposed changes, actually. Um, one thought on reservists, perhaps we could do it the other way around. Couldn't we perhaps get Councillor Walsh nominated as a reservist? <laughs> um, I will... I will wait for the uh, motion at council eagerly. Oh, we all could bring it to cross party <laughs> leaders. Um, no comments from uh, Councillor Cox there, I see. So, <laughs> right. Thank you very much, uh, Dom, for, for the work uh, that's been carried out on, on that very important area, re re ensuring that the council remains up to date with um, changes in legislation. It's very important. Much appreciated. So, uh, for the benefit of. Um, People who are watching the recording of this, uh, the, uh, the 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 
the next item is confidential item because it contains information about staffing changes uh, and so therefore we um, have to stop the recording and consider this in a confidential setting.